Okay, so here we are back to do another test route. This time again, we're going to be doing following the signs. So no sat nav for the independent drive. I will be doing my maneuver, which is something you'll do on your driving test. So some sort of reversing. And we're going to be doing the independent drive, like I said, following the signs, which is a lot harder. This whole video, I'm going to be telling you why people will fail the driving test. So if you're here to see someone mess up and make stupid mistakes, like you'll see on all these other mock test videos, mine included, but I do try to not make fun of people. I like to try and help people out. And you can see a lot of videos out there just making fun of the people, the worst driver ever, 21 serious faults, what the hell is he or she doing, etc. No, we don't do any of that. We're not dumbing people down. I'm here to just try and help you and give you all the advice that you need to pass your driving test. So let's get started. The examiner's done his speech. We've done our meet and greet. And I've been asked my show me, tell me question on the way to the vehicle. I actually just realized I forgot to do the show me question on the last video. So what I'm going to do on this one is two show me questions to make up for the one I missed on the last video. Must remember that. So I've been asked to move away and at the end of the road turn right. I have turned on my right signal early. If you're in a manual car, I'll do my best to give you all the manual advice. This is the point where you must set your biting point, set your gas, and then slowly release your handbrake when you feel it's safe to go. In an automatic car, I just take my foot off the brake, and that's it. So, at the end of the road, mirror, mirror, right, signal, right, and we're coming up to the end of the road. I'm going to stop here as there's traffic on the road, and the visibility is not great. We call this a closed junction because of the parked cars I can't see properly. I'm edging out into the center of the road slowly. This is called creeping before I can see the road safely, which is the observations, which is called peeping. Once I've creeped and peeped and I know that the road ahead is clear, I can proceed to reach the center of the road before steering right and completing my right turn. Okay, so I'm following the road up. This is similar to the last route and we're at Greenford Test Center. So it doesn't matter what test center you're at, you're going to be nervous. And this next junction is on a hill. So if we're going back to the typewriters of manual cars or whether you're in the new latest iPhone of automatic cars. Whether your preference is old technology or new technology, we're all different and we all have different needs. So let me cater for both. At the end of the road, turn left. This is where I will be starting my independent drive and following signs to Rainer's Lane. Now I'm positioning all the way to the left, going over these little faded lines on the left, which aren't important, and taking my position to the left. Now, if I was in a manual car, I'd stop, clutch down, brake on, handbrake up, and now I'd set my, make sure I'm in first gear, set my biting point, extremely steep hill, worried about the cars behind me, set the gas, release the handbrake slowly, apply the gas, raise the clutch up gently, make my turn, make sure I don't mess my clutch up in that very sharp left turn on a very steep hill with oncoming traffic and vehicles behind me. Now, if you're in an automatic car, welcome to the future. All you'd need to do is release the brake. Okay, now I'm going to be following the signs towards Rainer's Lane. So if you have a look here on the left, you will see a sign. At the top, it says Rainer's Lane. Shortly after that, we have another sign with arrows in it. A lot of people think they've got to use the middle lane, but look at the left side. You can use the left lane to go straight ahead. This is something that you will need to do on your driving test. So if you can use the left lane, you must use the left lane. And that's what I've done here. Now that's going to lead into a very important part of this video on this route that I'm currently doing following the signs to Rainer's Lane. Now there will be a left lane further down the road at the third roundabout that I'm about to do. Third roundabout I'm about to do. I need some more coffee. And there is a bus lane on the left. You must go into the bus lane. You must use the bus lane. If you don't use the bus lane, you will most likely fail your driving test. Now, it does depend at what time of the day you go to do your driving test. If you are after the time of 10 a.m., you must use this bus lane. If you do this route and it's before 
So if you do following the signs of Ramers Lane and it's before 10 a.m., you mustn't use the bus lane. I will cover how you would use the bus lane on this video. I will also talk about how you would not use the bus lane if you were asked to go this way before 10 a.m. It's very unlikely that you will go this way before 10 a.m. as the examiners tend to only use this route when it's after 10 a.m. as it will take you to a very busy dual carriageway called the A40. If it's any time before that, then there will most likely be traffic. So it's not something that will definitely happen, but more likely to happen. So if you're the type of person who wants to time your routes on your test center so that you make sure you don't get the busy roads and the busy junctions and all of that, then rush hours tends to be the time where the examiners won't necessarily go that way. But it can happen. Don't let anybody else tell you, you will always go this route on your test. That is completely untrue. Very important that you prepare for all situations. The most important parts that I focus on with my students are the hardest parts. So wherever anybody's booked their test, I will try my best to always show them. What do you mean try your best? I always show them the hardest routes first. My mentality is that if you can do the hardest routes, you will have no trouble with the easy routes. That way it saves you time and money. If I start you out doing the easy routes, you're going to be wasting time, wasting money. If we just get cracking on with the hard routes and you can master those and learn along the way, then why waste your time and your money doing the easy routes? So now I'm on a 20 road. It's very important I maintain 20 miles an hour all the way down this road, even though the cars behind me are breathing down my neck and almost pushing me to go faster. I must maintain 20. As you can probably hear the warning chime that's going ding dong every single time I reach 20. And that reminds me that I've reached the speed limit so that I don't go any faster. Otherwise, it's very easy to get caught up in the car behind pressing us to go faster and we accidentally go over the speed limit, which is a serious form of test. A lot of people don't see this roundabout and there's no directions given from the examiner so I follow the road ahead. Very important that you scan the traffic on the right and make sure that they're not signaling to actually turn right on the roundabout, which means they're going to cross your path. And that means if you don't see that signal, you don't see that oncoming vehicle that's turning on the roundabout and you just keep driving straight forwards, you're going to receive a serious fault for observations at junction, which is the number one reason why people fail the driving test for like 10 years in a row. I'm still following the signs to Rainer's Lane. That is to go straight at the roundabout. There's no lane markings, but there are two lanes because the road is wide enough. I'm positioning myself to the left. I'm holding the left lane, but I'm not taking the first exit. I'm taking the second exit. I'm going into this stony, patchy bit where absolutely nobody drives. And that's why there's all that patch of stone and rubble because no cars cross that area. That's why it just, all that sediment just sits there. That's the target for you. You want to drive through that sediment on that left side of the roundabout to make sure that you don't cross that imaginary line and into the right lane, into the cars that may be following you on your right. I'm doing the same again, Rainer's Lane. This is the bus lane exit. I must use the bus lane. Keep the left lane to go straight, second exit, no traffic on the right, using a sensible approaching speed. Here's the patch of rubble. I'm driving in it, driving over into the left lane, into the bus lane, and I'm using the bus lane on the exit. I actually forgot to signal left there. However, what would have saved me is that I've positioned so well in the left lane that is regarded as a signal. Your lane, your direction, the way you're pointing is all looked at as a signal. Yes, you can indicate and you can add to that, which is obviously going to benefit other people. But in that situation, I wouldn't fail because I've positioned so correctly. It's going to show everybody where I'm going. I've been asked to turn left at the end of the road. I've checked the right side here. This is a junction. 
and left again. So it's an immediate left into another left. I kept my signal on and I've approached into this junction at a reasonable speed. That means a speed that where I would be able to stop safely. So not flying around the corner and oh my God, there's an oncoming car, bang, hit the brake, but going into the car, into the turn gently and making sure that if there is an oncoming car that I can see it and I can adjust my speed and give that nice, safe, comfortable ride to the examiner, which they will appreciate. So, as you can see this long road here, I've now been told that I'm no longer on the independent drive. I have finished that part of the test, which was following the signs to Rainers Lane. And now I'll be given directions. I'm going to use this long road, which would be a test of meeting situations, to just briefly cover what you would do with the last roundabout if you were asked to go there after 10 a. Uh, sorry, before 10 a.m. That means you can't use the bus lane. So in that case, I'd advise you use the right lane as you approach the roundabout. There are no lines or arrows or road markings on that roundabout, on the approach, or even on the roundabout itself. That means you can, in fact, use the right lane to go ahead. So if you're using the right lane to go ahead and you probably never do this because you'll probably never go that way before 10 a.m., then you'll be in the right lane on the exit, which will avoid you from having to use the bus lane or go, oh, my God, there's a bus lane, and swerve to avoid it and go into the right lane and into a car that might be following you on the roundabout or any vehicle that might be following you on the roundabout. Motorbikes are extremely dangerous because they're smaller and we might not see them. So by holding the right lane, approaching that junction in the correct lane, then you will be in the correct position. I'm going to let the bicycle go here because I don't want to move out and hit the bicycle as it's coming into this narrow section here. So there's a meeting situation for me. It wasn't a car, it was a bicycle. Now, I couldn't keep driving straight ahead because I knew when that bicycle reached me, there was a car on my right side, and that bicycle would be out into towards my line, into my path. So what I did is slowed down, slightly pulled over to make space for the bicycle, and that way it was a safer situation rather than just driving into a bicycle. Mirror, mirror, signal right, and I've been told to turn right. This junction's a bit weird, it's like a U-turn. Now, there's no cars behind me, so I'm gonna illustrate the correct position here. I've maintained roughly one meter from the park, cars on the left, Reach the center line on my right, which is the center line of the road that I'm turning into, and then turn. Because if I turn any sooner than the center line, I will go into the oncoming traffic. That is a different road. That on the left is a side road. It's got different markings. Hence, it shows it's a different road. So I've just turned right and onto this road, and now follow this road. So I'm not going right and then somewhere else, I'm just going right and following the road. Following the road straight ahead, and I can see further down the road that there's a big circle with an arrow on it. And that's telling me that I must go that way. So this is a roundabout, and the examiner told you, at the roundabout, turn left, first exit. What two mirrors do you check before signaling left? So is it the interior mirror and the left mirror and then signal? Yes, that is correct. I don't like this guy, so I'm just slowing down to see what he's doing. And now he's moved away, I will continue. Uh, he was looking at me a lot there, that man, so it, I, I predicted he possibly was looking at me because he might keep walking out towards me, so that's why I stopped. Um, now, looking down the road ahead, there's possibilities that I might be asked to pull over and stop on the left. So examiners now ask me, pull over and stop in a convenient place on the left. Uh, there isn't any convenient place here because it's all like driveways. So what the examiners might do is actually ask you to pull over. Well, actually, no, I can stop here. There's enough, there's enough raised curb here for me to stop. Yeah, I'm not blocking any driveways, so I'm going to stop here. So before I said that, I would say another thing the examiners might ask you to do is actually pull over and stop and leave a car length from the vehicle in front. And this is what I've done here. So not only have I not blocked driveways, but I've actually stopped leaving about a car length from the vehicle in front. 
This is part of the test. It's called an angled start. And then the examiner asks you to drive away afterwards. Now, I'm going to do my show me question here. So the examiner's asked me as I'm driving down this road to show him how I would beep the horn. So there you go. Pretty straightforward. Just push the big round circle in the middle of the steering wheel. And that is a standard for most vehicles. Push that nice and hard and I beep the horn. So I completed one show me question. I'll do one more to make up for the last video. And I'll do that in a more suitable area because now I'm approaching the end of the road where I've been instructed to turn left. I had to re-signal as my signal cancelled. But before I signal, what two mirrors do I check for turning left? Very important we get a good habit, and as you're probably aware, I'm non-stop talking on these videos. And this is literally all the thought processes that are going through my mind, plus obviously trying to, you know, put them in a way that's easy to understand for you, the viewer, and help you pass your driving test. But it is literally a non-stop firing of neurons. What's that? What's the next habit? Oh, look at this uh, zebra crossing here. Is there anyone using the crossing? No. Is there an island in the middle? No. That's one complete crossing. That's that hazard done. Bus stop. No one there. Can I drive over a bus stop? Yes. Scott says always drive over yellow. So where am I going at the roundabout? Second exit straight ahead. Use the left lane. Keep my position. So I'm keeping the left. There's a roundabout twist here. I twist with it, but I'm still watching to the right. It's just a one second glance. Back on the road, one second back on the road. Mirror, mirror, signal left, keep my left position. Make sure that I don't put too much right steering on, which will go glide me or guide me, I uh, don't know what word to choose there, into the actual center of the roundabout, where I want to stay on the outsides of the roundabout because I'm keeping the left lane and I'm going straight, second exit. Position is super, super important. A massive area where people fail on their driving tests for lane discipline, especially on roundabouts, and then they'll get a serious rule and fail. We have now reached Victoria Road, and the next roundabout coming up is unorthodox. Very important that you know this, as this is a very big area for people to fail the driving test. What is an unorthodox roundabout? That means that the left lane is a left only. I haven't been given any direction, so where do I go? Yes, follow the road ahead. Look at the road markings here, straight arrow in the right lane. No one on the right, so I can proceed. Keep in slightly on the circle, guys. Slightly on the circle. If it's a white circle, you're allowed to just slightly cut the circle. And that means that you go on it slightly. Just my half of the car, the right tires, just gently cutting, driving across that white circle as we go. The reason for that is better lane discipline. There's a few roundabouts at Greenford where you must drive slightly on the circle, otherwise you'll fail. I'll do those in the next videos. Going straight again and using the right lane again because everybody on the left goes into Sainsbury's and I'm going to drive slightly on the circle again. I did check my left mirror just in case anybody on the left was going to go straight with me on the roundabout. I can use both lanes, that's fine. So I'm checking my mirror just to make sure that no one's done that. Never seen anybody do that. Um, and then I've exited the roundabout for mirror check there. Nice and clear, nice and safe. Seen it coming, know what lane to use. Good advice from a driver and instructor. So I'm reassured that what I'm doing is necessary and safe to do on my driving test. I've now been asked to turn left at the traffic light. So checking my mirror, signaling left, even though I'm in a left only lane. As you can see, there's a pedestrian in front of me crossing the road. No doubt he had a look at my car, saw the signal, also knew that I was stopping because of the traffic light. So all of this information, you know, the pedestrians are taking in and they're making decisions. Now, if we don't signal, the pedestrian may or may not make a dis safe decision. So it's just helping or benefiting other people. And this is what the examiners will say is the use of signal. Will it benefit? This can be a gray area sometimes because what one person may say yes to, another person may say no. So if you just always signal, as long as you're not confusing people, you're not misleading, you're not giving any dangerous signals like signaling right and then turning left, you know, that would be dangerous, then you're not going to fail your driving test. In fact, it's quite the opposite. You're helping, you're benefiting, you're being a safe and responsible driver.
Okay, most of the time you'll be asked to turn left down this next road, so mirror, mirror, signal left, and this will be a good area for the examiners to ask you to do a manoeuvre. So very, very slow and steady as this road is incredibly narrow, and if I had an oncoming vehicle, I would have to stop entering the road to allow that vehicle to exit the road. So the examiners asked me to pull over and stop on the right, mirror, mirror, signal right, and pull over and stop on the right. Now do look for raised curbs if possible, so if you can see there's a nice raised curb like there is here next to the pole, then you know in the distance, oh there's a pole, there's a tree, there's most likely going to be a raised curb next to the pole next to the tree, because you can't have a drop curb or a driveway with a tree in the middle, can you? So it's a good tip, so see ahead, plan early, don't suddenly just pull your vehicle over very quickly. Any changes in direction or speed, like sudden changes in direction or speed, is dangerous and it's most likely going to result in an accident. So everything nice and smooth, steady, plan ahead. Now the examiners asked me to reverse back roughly two car lengths in a straight line. So I've done my all-round observations. My car is super straight even before I get started. So I won't need to do any steering. I'm a good distance from the curb. So I'm just going to nice and slowly go back. This is about one car length. Check all the way around. You can see I'm doing lots of observations. Another car length. Checking my little blind spot mirror there just to kind of see where I am with the curb. I also have a reverse camera in this car. And I'm roughly two car lengths back. And that's me completed my reverse back to car lengths. Now the examiner said, thank you very much. Uh, you're amazing, Scott. Drive on when you're ready. So I'm doing my all-round observations from the right side to the left side. Now why it's the opposite way round is because I'm stopped on the opposite side of the road. That means the left side of the road is the most dangerous side. So now I check that side last. Know that there's no vehicles in this path where I'm going to be going next. And then if you're in a manual car, it's the whole point where you mustn't stall now because that might be dangerous. Make sure you're, you know, composed, holding that biting point, setting that gas, releasing the handbrake. Oh, I forgot to signal. Oh, did I do my observations correctly? Oh, my God, what's going on? Oh, now I'm moving away. Um, if you're in an automatic car, all you need to do is release the brake. Okay, at the end of the road, turning right, interior mirror, right mirror, and signal right. Past the parked vehicle, shoulders gone past, recalibrating, making myself nice and positioned, close to the center line, and slowly coming to a stop. So from running to jogging to walking speed, end of the road, nice and clear, good visibility, signal back on, because again it disengaged, signals can be a bit fidgety sometimes, reach the center of the road, then turn, right, don't turn when you're at the giveaway line, because there's no obstructions in front, go out to the center, then turn right, this is the correct point of turn, for steering right. Now, the examiner may ask you to pull over and stop on the left again in a convenient place. So what I'd like you to do now is look ahead for any poles. Oh, look, there's a pole there on my right. That's right, left. Could There's another pole there, but there's a yellow line. All right, anywhere further down, I can see a tree on the left just behind the uh, black vehicle. Oh, that looks good. Mirror, mirror, signal left. There's a tree here. Nice big bit of raised curb. And I'm going to pull in nice and slow, straighten the vehicle up, and then we're here, just next to the tree, lots of room from the car in front. Drive away when it's safe to do so, all round observation, signal right, and moving off, nice and clear, nice and quiet. Now, looking ahead, we see chevrons. Chevrons are these black and white arrows. They're showing me where the road will bend. This is the main road and where I will be following. Sometimes people think this is the end of the road, but it's not. Now, look how close I'm getting to these actual barriers. A lot of people will go out over that center line. I didn't. I stayed inside the line, in my lane, very safe, not turning into oncoming traffic and going over the line. And I can't see the oncoming traffic because it's a sharp right bend. So if I went over that line and into the oncoming traffic, especially in an area where I can't see, that is incredibly dangerous and a serious fault for your position or lane discipline. So make sure that you know about these junctions. And I really hope that this video is going to help you to pass your test.
please leave a like as it is free any comments subscribe obviously all good stuff for me so i'm trying to help you if you would try to help me that would be amazing Thank you very much in advance. And now I've been asked to turn left at the end of the road. This can be another independent drive. So now you've done your manoeuvre back here and the examiner's got you to follow the road round to this point, told you to turn left and then follow the signs to central London. So this is the part that I was referring to earlier where we'll be going towards a very busy uh, dual carriageway road. Now, gentlemen, just behind me here in the van, Sorry, because I usually say a lot of bad stuff about white vans. <laughs> um, he let me out. So central London here on the left. So because he stopped, I didn't force him to stop. And he let me to actually turn out. I used that advantage and I completed my left turn. Following the signs of central London, which is left again, which I've just done at the traffic light. And then central London straight down this road where there'll be another sign, which will be the dual carriageway roundabout, which is the Polish War Memorial roundabout. And that will take me back towards Greenford roundabout. So along the A40 to Greenford roundabout. And then we'll be back at the test center. Now we're going to do one more show me question because this next part here is going to be a lot of talking because it's very, very tricky, this next part. Okay, so show me question real quick. Scott, would you show me how you would wash the front windows uh, using the washers and wipers? Now, this car, it's very easy. It's just one button. It will do automatic for you, start and stop. So all you need to do is push the button in. There you go, and that's done. I will do more videos, obviously, guys. The channel's growing quite a lot now, and I am going to push all these videos for everything you need. So please write down suggestions. Sometimes it makes... It takes a little time for me to do this, but I will do my best to get around to everybody. So uh, at the junction here, turning left towards central London, mirror, mirror, signal left, keep the left lane, approaching speed, jogging speed here, looking to the right. I can see it's actually an opportunity for me to go. I would walk out, keep to the left lane, and now it's a 50 mile an hour road. So I must build my speed up here, 50 miles an hour, 30, 40 miles an hour, and 50 miles an hour now. Now I'm joining a dual carriageway. Mirror, mirror, signal right. Not because I need to, but because it will benefit. Check over my right shoulder. Check over my right shoulder. 50 miles an hour maintained. Now I need to go central London. Next sign. Change lanes. Check over my shoulder. Check over my shoulder. And we're in. Now notice how quickly I checked over my shoulder. One second. One second, one second. Now I can have many one second glance, but what you don't want to do is this. One, two, oh my God, I almost have a heart attack doing that. That's terrifying. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Right. Why? Yeah, I think you probably guessed it. Now I went through a speed change there. <coughs> it's gone from 50 to 40. Now that's usually a speed change that I miss. However, you didn't hear the ding dong noise. So you know that I'm actually within speed limits. Otherwise the warning chime would have gone. There we go. <laughs> All right, so I've reached 40. So make sure I hold the brake a bit. I'm going downhill. That's why the vehicle speed has increased. So now I'm on the A40. I've done an amazing job. I've built up my speed, super pressured there made sure I changed lanes into the center lane safely by doing my mirrors, my signals. If I'm comfortable, quick little shoulder checks for any blind spots, motorbikes you may not see in the mirrors. Now, what's happening here on the left? Is that car going to join me? Well, no, because there were signs there telling me that it's got its own lane. I can see it's got its own lane. So that means there's three lanes now. There's this new one on the left. So remember earlier, we talked about you must use the left lane if it's safe, even if it's a bus lane. Mirror, mirror, signal left. Get my bum back in this left lane. Because if I do not, and I continue to stay in that middle lane, when it's safe for me to use this left lane, I will fail my driving test. This is called positioning, normal driving. If you do not use the left lane, when it's safe to use the left lane, you will fail your driving test for position, normal driving. So this part is super important. And the amount of people that have failed the driving test for not moving back into left lane, 
Last year must have been at least a thousand. I swear. Across the nation, probably even higher. Why'd you fail? Oh, I didn't use the left lane. Oh, okay. Oh, why'd you fail? Oh, I didn't go in the bus lane. Oh, okay. Watch this video, it's free. You don't even have to pay. <laughs> And you'll know how important it is. I had one gentleman, he knew this, same junction, two times on his test, he used the incorrect lane, and he knew he was doing it. Anyways, so now I'm being asked to exit. So the exit's coming up here. This is left um, towards Greenford Roundabout. So I've done my left signal. I've checked my mirrors just to be extra safe. Now the signal stayed on. I had a student fail here. One serious fault here because they left their signal on. And look, there's a side road coming up here. I've been instructed to turn left at the roundabout, first exit. I've passed this side road with no signal. Everybody's gonna think I'm going straight. Mirror, mirror, single left. If the signal stays on when you exit the dual carriageway, even though you're not intentionally gonna turn that way, your signal's showing people that you may turn that way. So what might they do if they see that you're signaling left? They might drive out into the road in front of you because you're signaling left. Dangerous, serious fault for unnecessary signal. Now, nice and easy turning left on the roundabout. Got a traffic light there, which helps me. It holds up all the traffic. So when I get green, I just turn left, nice and easy. Looking down the road, I can see a parked car and some arrows here, telling me I need to change direction. I've also put my signal on. Not only am I checking on my mirrors, which is the most important part for change direction, I've added a signal, an indicator, a trafficator, because that way it will benefit the person following me, knowing that I intend to change lanes. If there's someone in the lane next to me, if I signal early, earlier is better, they see that signal early they might adjust the speed and give you some space in order to change lanes safely so planning looking ahead putting signals on early checking mirrors early all of this stuff as early as possible can make it so much more easier for you to drive on your driving test so plenty of practice maybe watching these videos if you don't want to go out there with an instructor and run routes some instructors may not even show you test routes so this way the video is there for you if you need it um, but otherwise if you can practice these routes and have an instructor with you that can get you actually on road behind the wheel put your hands on feel that experience that is another good way of you preparing for your driving test Okay, so now I've used the right lane, even though I've not been given any instruction and probably talked literally for about five to 10 minutes about the importance of using the left lane, this is the exception. The bus in front of me I know is turning left. Not only is it signaling, but its position showed me. That way, using the right lane, there's the same amount of cars in the left or right lane, but I believe I would make more progress because that bus was actually gonna turn and it would have to do it slowly. So using this right lane, no one in front of me was allowed to turn right at that junction. That means we're all gonna keep going straight. That bus is gonna slowly turn. This lane would be a better choice. So if you can make better progress in the right lane, you can use the right lane. Also look, there's some parked cars here. So if I'm being asked to follow the road ahead and I can see that there's parked cars further down the road, then why would I move back into the left? This is a prime example now. So look, this whole left side, even though there's parking bays here, you know, can I move over there? Is it safe? Let me have a look. Well, actually further down the road, uh, actually no, yeah, okay, it looks clear. Okay, I don't see any parked cars, so look, I'm moving back over to the left. Use the left lane. If there was some parked cars or any reason why I couldn't use the left lane, then yes, I would stay in the right lane. This junction, the vehicle in the right lane can turn right, so you're allowed to go that way. So maybe this lane would be better if I was going straight ahead, as if I used the right lane, I wouldn't make progress. I'd get stuck behind that vehicle. Looking further down the road ahead, I'm assessing still to see, is there any parked cars? No, I can't see any. However, the examiner's asked me, at the traffic lights, turn right. Mirror, mirror, signal. I'm the leader, that means I'm in front of this car, so I'm gonna keep leading, I'm gonna keep staying out in front. 
That means I'm not slowing down as I change lanes. I'm maintaining speed or I'm increasing speed if I can to stay the leader and lead. There was a safe disc. It's hard for you to see. So some of my other videos, I got multiple cameras, multiple angles, and I really tried to make it like a cinema experience. But this one, there aren't as many cameras. So you want to be able to know that there is a safe distance. So how I judge that using a mirror, you can look over your shoulder, which gives you true depth perspective. But if you use your mirror, you want to see that the car in your mirror is in the middle of your mirror. It's not fit your mirror. I've reached the center of this road, lined up the center of the next road. If I need to stop and wait because there's oncoming traffic, that's where I stop and wait. If not, I've reached a point where I can turn so I can turn right and that's what I did because it was safe. There wasn't any oncoming vehicles. Here I'm going to go a little bit slower because there's not much room. Remember, less space, less speed. And I can see there's an oncoming vehicle here. So I'm just going to wait here and give plenty of distance from the parked car in front, which will also give plenty of distance from the oncoming traffic, which gives me more room for them and for me to move back out after. So now I'm scanning, keeping the center of the road. Got a good meter gap from the parked cars on the left. Good meter gap from the parked cars on the right. That means I'm down the center of the road. That means I'm over the road markings. That's 100% necessary because if I'm not over the road markings, if I'm not down the center of the road, there's so many areas for danger. One, somebody could step out between the parked cars and I wouldn't have enough distance to, to keep a safe gap there. So that's a good reason. Two, it can actually help me to see down the road a bit better. Um, but mainly it's all about safety. Everything's safety, guys. So you can see me leaning a bit here to try and see down the road. This, this, the visibility is not great, but being positioned correctly can help that visibility. Okay, all depends on the circumstances. That's why teaching and learning sometimes can be very frustrating because it might be the same road but completely different situations. And then that's where it leads into confusion because, oh, I was on this road yesterday, I did this. And today I'm doing that. Why? Because it's a different type of scenario, different conditions. At the end of the road, turn right, mirror, mirror, signal right. Coming to a stop here. Now checking it's clear and getting to the center, then turning. And then I'm back at my test center now. So usually this is how you finish your driving test. And I've been asked to take the next road on the left, mirror, mirror, signal left. Nice and gentle, hold the brake early, come to about jogging speed, nice and smooth, pulling over. Usually examiners just ask you to pull it over here on the left somewhere. Don't worry about the driveways. Just pull over on the left here for me. And that's what I'm going to do now. Nice and steady, nice and smooth, keeping the signal on and coming to a nice slow stop. And there you go. The examiner's going to ask you to switch the engine off. So turn the engine off and they're going to read you your results. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, like I mentioned earlier, a like, it's for free. So if you just leave a like on the video, that'd be great. For, I, I would be grateful. I've done lots of talking now. I think my coffee is finished. <laughs> so I've been Scott. This is Two Day Pass and stay safe. See you next time.